I think I, I believe Clay will play, but he, we're still listening as questionable. We got to see how he uh, feels in pregame. And Andre, um, again, in, incremental progress, and um, we'll ga- we'll see game time decision. He needs more treatment, and we'll probably warm up tonight, and we'll see what happens. There's obviously a lot of things going on and a loss like that, but um, how much do you attribute to just Kevin not making shots that he's kind of made all the series before? That? No, I don't. I don't attribute it to that. Um, Kevin and his staff play their lot of so capable of saving the game, you know, shot making, but uh, we didn't work to get good shots. We, we, our shots were not good. So, yeah, so if we're not getting good shots, I can't point to shot making as a reason at all. I, I point to we're not getting good shots. And then you, as a coach, you have to like, look at the block. And that's what the last couple of days has been. And uh, so we're focused on our execution and getting better shots. How much of it is Kevin's catch zone right now? I, mean, I have like, to turn and look at yeah. you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why I won the game. <laughs> 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 um, his, his catch zone, I mean, it seems like this the last game he's catching the ball. That's execution. That's, that's, uh, if we're catching it on our heels and we're, you know, 30 feet from the hoop, we're not, we're not running our offense well. We're not we're allowing the defense to take So that's a big call there. Where did you where did you where feel did change at? Yeah. I mean, is it just Kevin has to do it? Yeah. So this goes back to John Wooden basketball camp. You're in sixth grade. Honestly, you can't just rely on the talent. When a team is getting into you, and they're putting pressure on you, and switching you, you got to execute. It's the basics, it's the fundamentals, getting open, better passing, better ball movement. It all starts with the force you know, I keep going back to that, uh, that comment, that phrase. Standing and waiting for the ball 30 feet, which we were all doing, but that's not playing. Where do you feel the absence of Andre? Uh, well, Andre does a little bit of everything for us, obviously. Uh, you know, one of the best defensive players in the league, and, and the versatility that you have to have game today. Uh, I think Andre embodies that. And obviously he's a point forward for us. He settles us down. Fewer turnovers seem to happen. Andre's on the floor. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a very important player. Finals MVP at the so, uh, Hopefully he can play. If not, tonight, then hopefully he can play. In a game like that where the offense is somewhat unfocused and scattered, what could he have done maybe in the fourth quarter with that? All of the stuff I just mentioned. Get us organized. Steve, what are your thoughts on the NFL's reaction to the anthem? Like, I think it's just typical of the NFL. Um, they're just playing to their fan base. And they're just uh, basically trying to use the anthem as a big patriotism, nationalism, scaring people. It's idiotic, but that's how the NFL is handled in business. I'm proud to be in a league that understands patriotism in America is about free speech, about peaceful protesting. And our leadership in the NBA understands that when the NFL players are kneeling, they were kneeling to protest police brutality, protest racial inequality, and disrespecting the flag of the military. Our president decided to make it about that. The NFL followed suit, hammered um, to their fan base, and created this hysteria. It's kind of what's wrong with our country. Right? You know, people in high places are trying to divide, uh, divide us, divide loyalties, make this about the flag, uh, as if the flag is something other than what it really is. It's a representation of what we're about. It's diversity, peaceful protests, abilities, right to free speech. So it's really ironic, actually. Speaking of irony, so what do you miss with this? The NBA, I mean, there is more of a formalized policy with the end, but there seems to be more of an outlet. Like, oh, 
Well, the NBA is, uh, yeah, I mean, Adam and the league's leadership, we feel like we're partners. Players, coaches, management, league management, we feel like we're partners. And um, we, uh, I'm really proud of our players uh, around the league for really being community leaders, being outspoken for, 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 for good, the change that we need, whether it's... Uh, you know, I know tonight we'll be uh, honoring the victims of the Santa Fe shooting. A lot of our players have been outspoken in terms of gun, gun safety and violence. Uh, and our league supports it. And I think we're proud to be part of a whole group that is just trying to make the country better and make some changes for the better. So I'm proud of the NBA for that. Did you feel that partnership when you came into the league as a player? Or has that changed? I think it's evolved over time. Um, you know, when I came into the league, I, I don't think uh, social issues were at the forefront of uh, society. I think we were we were just in a better place in terms of uh, what was happening in the world. I think we were more united. I think the country has been divided over the last uh, decade or so, or maybe since 9/11. Since that time, I think the league the players have grown closer to becoming partners and trying to improve communities. I think David Stern had a lot to do with that, and I think Adam Silver has really taken that uh, that leadership mantle and made it a player. Yeah, you know, it's it's um, obviously devastating anytime you hear a story like this. Um, what's equally as devastating is the number of times you hear these stories. I remember in the finals two years ago, um, maybe it was the conference finals, we had a moment of silence for the Orlando victims at the Pulse nightclub two years ago. And we still haven't done anything. I know the government still hasn't done anything uh, in terms of gun safety. Santa Fe victims were victims because the parent of the shooter didn't lock the guns up. Why don't we have laws to lock guns up? Uh, safety, the basic safety laws yeah. make so much sense. And yet we're tied up in this idiotic political battle, ideological battle. Um, there are so many common sense gun reform measures we can take, and yet uh, we refuse to do so. Uh, uh, ideological philosophies and dynamics, and yet kids continue to get slaughtered. And we're going to honor those victims tonight, and their family members are going sad, and everybody's going to be devastated. Who's going to do it? Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.